Hello, this is Bern, and on today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can be devotionally loved by a quality man. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to yourgreatlife.com. Today's tutorial video is going to be jam-packed with actionable insights and the kind of information that if you choose to take action on and step into, you can start creating that kind of attraction and devotional love that you've been wanting for a lifetime. Now, this tutorial video is also a shorter version of my free 42-minute masterclass that I've had the blessing of sharing already with thousands of women around the world that can help you create a blueprint to find your soulmate in a lot less time and with a lot less pain than you could otherwise. If you want to access that for free, you can do that by clicking on the link on this post, clicking on the description of this video, or clicking on a button that shows up in uh, the video right now, and you can start watching it immediately. Now, let's get started. If you are like most amazing women that I've had the privilege of connecting with throughout my career, then you don't just want a boyfriend. You don't just want a partner. You don't just want a husband. You're looking for the kind of inspiring, heart-feeling, soul-moving love that feels more like adoration than anything else. And if you're trying to create that kind of relationship, there's ways to go about it where you can get it. There's ways where you won't get it. To understand what I'm really talking about when I talk about devotion, I'm really talking about a combination of two things. The feeling of enthusiasm and passion and loyalty for someone, and also the combination of the sanctity of the relationship, a spiritual component to the relationship, where the relationship is not just serving the purpose of two human beings, but it's serving a greater cause. It's helping the world by the mere act of showing up with a lot of excitement and passion. Now, the first step to create this kind of relationship is to understand that why you connect to a man is as important as how you connect to a man. So here's what I mean by that. Choose to connect with a devotion-worthy why. A why that actually catalyzes this kind of relationship. There's two primary reasons why human beings enter relationship. The first one and that's the one that most people follow and that's the one that most people get in pain for is to fill a void. I feel that my, half, my cup is half full and if I enter a relationship, then it's gonna magically fill up to the top, right? And uh, the, the challenge with that is that not only does that not necessarily inspire a guy to adore you the way you want to be adored, but you probably choose the wrong guy in the process because you'll feel a lot more needy and you'll compromise some of your strong uh, requests or some of your strong needs in order to get that need met. Now, there's nothing wrong with wanting to fill a void so long as the primary reason for entering a relationship is to expand on your happiness. If your happiness exists, if your cup is full, but you want to almost like create a bigger cup through entering a relationship, then you have the capacity through that kind of embodiment to connect with a kind of man who can love you devotionally and grow the relationship where it's ever expanding instead of just lasting for a couple of months and then the passion's gone. Step number two, to create the kind of adoration and devotion you want from a man is to step yourself into a higher vibration and commitment to self-love. It's almost as if you ask the question, how can I honor my goddess nature, not in thought but in action? What are the things I can do right now to show myself love? What are the boundaries I can set? What are the goals I can set for myself? What are the things I enjoy doing that will fill me up with passion and magic and fulfillment so that I fill up my cup and I can step into a high vibration? Step number three is to learn to date consciously. Uh, there's three components that I wanna share with you if you wanna date consciously. Number one is to show up with that aliveness you've been building up Show it, express it, don't just keep it to yourself. Vulnerably show it when you connect to the guys that you want to connect with. Show up with that magic. Number two is date non-exclusively. That means that until and unless you've connected with a guy enough to where you've created a friendship, that you know that he's vetted, meaning that he shows up when he says he does show up, that he really has a good intention and wants the same commitment that you want, your values are aligned, until that takes place, don't give up that exclusivity because if you do, that means that you're wasting time with someone who may not want the same things you want and unnecessarily allow you to suffer. Now, the third step in order to create the kind of devotion and the kind of conscious dating that I'm talking about is 
to hold off on, on having sex until you are exclusive with this human being, this man, right? And here's why. Because if you don't have sex until you're exclusive, you will be much more likely to see the reality of what's going on instead of feeling a deeper sense of attachment that has nothing to do with love, but it's more of like that physical wanting and that passion that may not be what sustains a relationship. The second part, reason why you wanna do that is because if the guy shows up and understands that you have high standards and he still continues to show up, that in principle is showing you one of the components of devotion, right? The fourth step is, and I know this sounds simple, but I want you to please think about it. Choose a man capable of offering you devotion and love. If you do the first three steps and you connect to a guy who's not really willing to commit, a guy who doesn't want to step into that kind of aliveness, or who wants it but can't, then you'll suffer unnecessarily. Here's a couple of keys that can show you that a guy is capable, in principle, of offering devotion and love. The first one is purpose. What do I mean by that? Does the guy know why the hell he's here? And if so, is he doing something to step into it, right? Second one is generosity. There's a deep component of service in devotion. And when I say generosity, I mean generosity in praising you, generosity in showing up, generosity in sharing his time, generosity in paying for a meal, for example. All of the times of generosity. If you see that guy has that quality of just generous nature, that's a deep insight into somebody who can step into devotion much more fully. But if you find that these concepts are helpful and useful, I ask you to do quick, three quick things. Number one, click like on this video. Number two, subscribe to my channel. But most important of all, if you want to take these concepts to the next level, if you want to see a few case studies and also understand in more precise ways how you can embody the kind of love that I'm talking about, uh, you can click on the link on this video above uh, there's a pop-up that shows up, there's a pop-up that maybe shows up in the middle. Uh, the description of this video has the same thing. And what that will do is you'll go to a page and all you do in this page is you click on this yellow bar, you enter your name and email, and then you start watching my masterclass uh, immediately. I uh, hope this is helpful for you. I encourage you to not settle for anything in the highest form of love you can experience. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.